I'm David DiVincenzo. I'm 52 years old, and I'm the director of theoretical nanoscience here. From my youth, I was interested in mathematics. Quantum mechanics has a lot of fascinating mathematical constructions, very elegant mathematical constructions. You know, you write some equation, and then it tells you about something about a wave, and then the wave uh, changes in time, and it's, it's all quite beautiful. And I remember, maybe it was in my second year or so of university, that uh, I got some quantum physics books. I had been seeing a little bit of it in my electrical science courses, and I had taken a book that I had been recommended. I remember taking it to the beach. So it was my beach reading in that summer. The simplest version of what I could say is that I use new ideas of physics to make computing better. What's the practical implication of the kind of work that I do? It does concern itself with computing and how computing machines will change in the future, will become better. A quantum computer, first of all, it doesn't exist yet. So I can't take you to a machine and say, there's the new quantum computer, and you can see how it's different. These criteria that I discussed in the community and have been largely accepted are at one level very basic statements about a computing machine. Uh, you have to have bits, except we call them qubits in quantum computers, and they have to be you know, well-controlled, and you have to be able to fabricate them. And when you make them into a computer, you have to be able to uh, set them in a starting state, and then you have to be able to run a program on them and read out the results. It all sounds extremely elementary. The computer will not sit on a desktop. It will be a cryostat, so it'll have to be at cold temperatures. It will still be an electronic device, so the uh, basic controlling of the machine will be using pulsed electric signals, rather like a regular computer today, that will do the individual operations, that will manipulate the zeros and the ones in this wave-like fashion. And we can see that it will have a unique role to play in several different areas of computation when we have it. It has fantastic capabilities for calculating new things for pure mathematics and pure physics. So there are math problems in the theory of numbers that it's capable of solving that we believe are totally impossible or would take, say, the age of the universe or for a regular computer or even a supercomputer to compute. Things like computing the structure of molecules their positive and negative implications of quantum computing. And indeed, it means that uh, people who make their business out of uh, snooping on the internet have an advantage over people who don't know anything about quantum computing and their capability. But of course, we know about quantum computers. And uh, in fact, because of, our, of the scientific work that's going on in quantum computers, we actually know quite well what their capability will be. And it will be not too hard to design systems that are secure against attacks from quantum computers. And we believe, therefore, will be really fundamentally more secure. I like to think about new scientific ideas connected with quantum information processing. So it was a great opportunity for me to come here. There's a terrific pool of scientists here in Jülich and also at the uh, universities nearby at Aachen who are top quantum scientists. And so I came into a group of uh, great experts in this field, and they're also terrific experts in growing new materials and in new material structures, new nanostructures that are definitely going to be relevant for the coming time of making new computers, not only quantum computers. The last 10 years have seen tremendous progress in the laboratory in making a quantum computer. I think the next 10 years will see another big leap. I don't think 10 years will be quite enough to have real functioning operational quantum computers, but it, it's not going to be a century either.